Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bernie Kelly. Um, I'm the principal investigator of two studies of relevance to today's topic um, at Queen's University Belfast. First is this one looking address, addressing the overrepresentation of looked after children with mental health needs and or disabilities in Northern Ireland. And we have a second study looking at the mental health needs of children and young people who are leaving care. But today we're focusing on this one, uh, which looks particularly at those who are still in care. The project is funded by the OFM DFM and I just want to add a disclaimer before we present the findings today that this is very preliminary. We're at the very early stages of analysing the quantitative data we have from a survey we conducted with social workers, but a full report will be available in the coming months, so if anyone is interested in accessing a copy of that, our contact details are at the end of the presentation and just let us know and we'll forward that to you. I'm just going to give you um, the background to the study and an overview of the methodology and then my colleague Sandra Dowling will present some of the initial findings. In terms of the background to the study, the overall aim of the study is to investigate the overrepresentation of children and young people with mental health needs and or disabilities in the looked after child population in Northern Ireland. So you can see it has a wider scope beyond mental health. Um, so we're focusing today just on the mental health perspective within that. The objectives of the study were to examine their characteristics. Who are these young people? What are their presenting needs? Where do they feature in the care system? What are their experiences of, of care placements? To identify the factors that led to them becoming looked after and to examine some of the organisational arrangements in place that impact on access to services for that population. Then we're looking at, at investigating their particular care experiences and how well their specific needs are being met. And we do hope that the study overall provides a baseline data to inform some further research to track the population as they continue through their care pathways and exit the care system. We have three stages to our methodology. Um, stage one is a review of the national and international literature on the mental health needs of children in care. Um, that is complete and is available. And if anybody would like a copy, just contact us and we can send it to you. The second is a review of the policy in Northern Ireland relating to um, children and young people with disabilities or mental health needs in Northern Ireland. And that's also complete and we can make copies of that available as well if people are interested. We are now at stage two, um, which is profiling the population of looked after children and young people with mental health needs and or disabilities. And what I've highlighted in blue there is the focus of our particular presentation today, those with mental health needs. We will later on be doing some case studies with a subsample of that population, um, up to 50 uh, disabled children and young people in Northern Ireland, 10 in each of the local health and social care trusts. So that would be forthcoming. So in terms of profiling the population, um, to give you uh, some detail on how we collected the data that, that the findings are based on today, we conducted a survey with social workers for each looked after child or young person defined as having a mental health need on the basis of either having an assessed mental illness, which was a, a lower figure, or um, awaiting or receiving tier three or four child and adolescent mental health services or specialist therapeutic lack services, which some of these children and young people are accessing for emotional support or mental health needs. The survey addressed a range of areas, um, including their particular mental health need and also their additional needs, other physical health needs, for example, their educational experiences, the social worker's view on risky behaviours, their contact with the criminal justice system and the levels of contact and supervision. We also had information on their family background, their parental background, and their looked after child experience, their looked after child status, whether they were voluntarily accommodated or under a care order, for example, the reasons why they became looked after, the placement types they've had, and the number of placement changes they've had, and some of the contact arrangements they have with their families. And finally, we had some questions on other professional supports that they may access beyond social work services and to record some of the unmet needs for that particular population. So we have a wealth of data in terms of this population. Today, Sandra's going to tell you a little bit about the initial findings. And as I said, if you want more details, you can contact us for the full report. Um, as Bernie says, I'm going to uh, talk about some of our preliminary findings from our uh, profiling work on the population of looked after disabled children across Northern Ireland. Our total sample is 509 young people across the five trusts. And out of that 509, we were able to identify 194 children and young people who have uh, mental health needs across the criteria that Bernie identified. So they either have an assessed mental illness, just 37 of the young people, 
or they're attending tier three, four CAMs, lack therapeutic services or other therapeutic services, which would include um, consultant psychiatry, clinical psychology, trauma center, those kind of um, interventions. In terms of their spread across the five trusts, 32% of, of the young people um, were found to live in the Southeastern Trust, 18% uh, in the Western, 19 in the Southern, and 20% in the Belfast Trust, so quite equivalent numbers there, and 11% in the Northern Trust. That kind of matches, in a way, the total figures that we have um, in terms of the, the representation of the total sample across the Trust, but we'll be looking at that closely as our, our analysis progresses. In terms of the demographic characteristics of the, the young people, um, the sample of 194 yielded fairly equal numbers of males and females with mental health needs. The majority who were identified as having uh, mental health needs were in their teenage years. So 49, almost 50% were between the age of 16 and 18, and 32% uh, in the 12 to 16 um, year age group. 44% of that 194 young people were also reported to have an intellectual disability. Um, and in terms of other um, concomitant disabilities, just 6% were reported to have a physical disability and 2% to be on the autistic spectrum. Almost half of those with an intellectual disability, so almost half of that 44% were accessing mental health support through um, psychiatry services rather than through child and adolescent mental health services or lack therapeutic services. Okay. Um, we also looked at the reasons uh, why the young people became looked after um, and their status, their looked after status. Over 50% of, of the 194 young people were on a care order um, and 24% of them were voluntarily accommodated. Um, others were, uh, uh, only 1% were on an interim care order and there were a few who were detained under the Mental Health Act and indeed there were a few who had been freed for adoption amongst this group. Um, the reasons for becoming look after, often um, more than one reason was identified for each of the individual children, um, so you'll see the numbers are quite high in some of the categories, but um, neglect and uh, parents not coping were the most commonly cited reasons, closely followed by emotional abuse. The other category here um, was interesting, uh, it included parental addiction, parents unable to cope with child's challenging behaviour, and for some, uh, family support, which was initially family, su family support in, uh, intervention, which was followed by child protection concerns and the child becoming fully looked after. Okay. Um, in terms of their length of time in care and their placement type, in the first year of care, none of the children or young people had an assessed mental illness, and less than 5% of them had access to mental health services. The proportions grew as the length of time in care in increased for the young people. Um, we found that the most common placement type for young people was in non-relative foster care, with 30% of them residing there, and 16% residing in children's residential homes, and 12% in kinship care. The proportion of children with an assessed mental illness was higher amongst those living in children's residential homes than those living reside, uh, in foster care settings. Those living in secure settings or in, in hospital settings were, as you would expect, children who had an assessed mental illness or children who were um, accessing Tier 3, 4 CAMS support. Uh, we uh, gathered some, some information about the children's, um, day, the young people's daytime activity and we found that the majority of them, ident uh, the social workers identified them as attending school. We were um, surprised at the low number, not in education, training or employment, although we were able to identify that quite a few of the older children had um, taken up pre-vocational training or apprenticeships or indeed were supported through other voluntary sector schemes such as the give and take scheme that some of you may know about. Um, an interesting uh, uh, set of findings came from when we looked at the children and young people's additional needs and we gathered information across a range of additional needs including their emotional as well as physical health needs. Social workers identified 62% of, of this population as having challenging behaviour. I'm sure you'll agree a very high um, number of the young people. 23%, so almost a quarter, were reported to have anxiety. 21% were assessed as having ADHD or ADD, so a fifth of the, the 194 young people. Physical health needs were reported more sparsely amongst this population, although they were there, but not in such kind of clustered groups as the others I've talked about. 
and 31% were identified as having other mental health needs for which social workers supplied um, various categories, which included um, areas which would be linked to their emotional health and well-being, such as attachment disorder, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, or low mood. Um, we gathered some information around risk-taking behaviour for, for this population um, and we asked social workers to assess the level of risk in relation to a number of domains, so risky sexual behaviour, attempted suicide, substance misuse or other, which they identified, um, and whether or not the risk was at high, medium, low level or no risk at all. These figures represent those who were um, at, at a high or a medium level and for which a service intervention was referred or was, was in place. Um, it's, it's very alarming to see that 40, 47 uh, of the young people, for instance, were at risk of attempted suicide out of 194. Around a quarter of, of the population were um, assessed at being at a high or medium risk in, in these categories and 38 of the young people at other risks, which included absconding, self-harm, being vulnerable in their community, and impulsive or aggressive behaviour. In terms of the additional support accessed by young people, um, we can see that there were high numbers accessing psychologist or psychiatrist support. Um, we also noted that there was quite a low uptake of transition coordinator, and given that um, there was such a high percentage of, of this 194 young people in the age 16 to 18 category, we would have expected more of them to be accessing transition support. And indeed, there was quite a low level of, of young people accessing short break service support. Um, out of a, a population where almost 40, uh, almost 50 percent have a, an intellectual disability. Um, other support indicated were the GP, um, the drug and alcohol mental health services and various other um, uh, statutory and voluntary sector support. We gathered data around unmet need and we've grouped this data um, uh, in an initial way around a number of, of key areas. We found that access to CAM and other disability services was an unmet, me unmet need reported by many um, of the social workers for the young people. Um, access to supported housing for those leaving care and support with um, substance and alcohol abuse was identified uh, uh, repeatedly by social workers as well as appropriate, what was considered to be appropriate training or educational opportunities. The reasons for unmet need, un, unmet need um, varied. In some instances, young people fell outside of the criteria for services. So for instance, an example was where a transfer to a children's disability team was requested, the child was found to fall outside of the criteria for that service. Um, in other instances, the service was refused to young people. An example of that was uh, young people trying to access uh, child and adolescent mental health services were unable to do so whilst they were engaged in um, the use of uh, alcohol or drugs. Um, Service was sometimes unavailable, so uh, an example was inpatient drug treatment centre for young people was not available within the region. Um, additionally, um, there were long waiting lists for some services, for example social housing or indeed CAMS. And, and then some young people just didn't engage in services that were, were made available to them and, and refused to, to take part. We've been able to identify some preliminary trends from this, and as I say, we are at a fairly early stage of our analysis um, in relation to our profiling. But we note that the um, incident of mental health needs increases with the age and the length of time in care, and that this has implications for those leaving care. Um, given that 48% uh, you know, of this population were in the older age group, this is something that we, we uh, see as, as very important. Um, these young people are accessing a range of services, but they're not always accessing child and adolescent mental health services. Um, and given the high instance of a, a coexisting mental health uh, need with intellectual disability, 48% of those young people were more likely to access support through psychiatry services than through child and adolescent mental health services. There are early indications of low levels of short break support for this population and very low levels of transition or low uptake of transition support for the, amongst the young people. A very large proportion of the sample were identified um, to present with challenging behaviours um, and it will be interesting to reflect on that when we come to our case studies and hear from the young people themselves as to their perspective on that. Um, 
almost a quarter of the sample were at risk of attempted suicide, and I think that that's a very uh, concerning figure, um, especially in the context of, of suicide within Northern Ireland more broadly. There was um, significant unmet need found due to a reason, uh, 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 a number of, of criteria, um, restrictions uh, in terms of the criteria, unavailability of services or lengthy waiting lists. We're moving on now with the study to, to look at the next steps and we hope that you'll be interested in, in following with us as we do that. We have um, further analysis of the survey data um, underway, both in relation to this population and thinking about the um, population of children with mental health needs in the context of, of those other young disabled people um, who are looked after for whom we have, have uh, data on. We're working um, ahead to construct case studies to gather more in-depth qualitative data and we'll be working with uh, 50 young people across the five trusts to do that over the next year. And we hope from that to be able to identify recommendations for policy and practice based on our overall findings. We're, um, as we go in, publishing uh, reports and uh, uh, reporting on our findings and our, and our progress on this. And we hope that you'll be interested in keeping up to date with the work that we're doing. Our contact details, Bernie and mine, are on the slide. Please note them down or I'm sure they're in your packs. And uh, we hope to hear from you.